It's time for the KQED TV High School Game of the Week. Now, WIAA Division IV Tournament Action, featuring the West Salem Panthers and the Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks. The High School Game of the Week is brought to you by Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Your comfort is their business. Southwest 2nd Avenue in Onalaska. Schumacher Kish Cremation and Funeral Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and Onalaska. Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. Boyer's Furniture, quality furniture at affordable prices on South Avenue La Crosse. Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill on Leonard Street in downtown West Salem. Advanced Cargo, shipping locally and around the world on Leonard Street in downtown West Salem. Rich Heating and Air Conditioning, your Armstrong dealer in West Salem. Union State Bank of West Salem, where customers and community come first. Schneider Custom Window Coverings on Brickell Road in West Salem. And American Family Insurance and your agent in West Salem, Jim Quinn. Now let's go down to the field and KQEG's Carl Greenfield and Terry Erickson. It's Good evening, football fans, and welcome to the KQEG TV High School Game of the Week. I'm Carl Greenfield, joined alongside by Terry Erickson. We got Ryan Scaife on the camera tonight, and we are here for a Division IV Level I playoff game between the visiting Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks and the home West Salem Panthers. Here we are at the beautiful, freshly renovated West Salem High School football field. And Terry, it's a little bit warmer than we were last week. I know you were indoors for the Sparta Aquinas game, but we were out here last week and a kickoff temperature was about 38 degrees. We're in the mid 50s right about now. Well, it's, it's a far cry well, from last week. When I got up this morning, went for my morning run at 5.30. I thought I'm gonna have to get my winter clothes back out, which I put away for just a couple days because it was a gloomy, it was a dreary, it was a rainy way to start the Friday. And then as the day moved on and here we are in the evening, it's a beautiful night for a uh, level one first round of game, so. I'm, I'm excited about it, and uh, I had not seen the new field, the renovated field. I've watched it uh, as it was being developed, but wow, pretty impressive. Yeah, they've done a great job here, and this shapes up to be a very interesting game. West Salem comes into tonight's game 6-3, and three, finished 4-3 and three in the MVC, came off of a couple of tough losses that squeaker against on Alaska two weeks ago where they went for two instead of going for the tie at the end of the game and lost that one. And then kind of a blowout last week against Lacrosse Central. And so West Salem trying to kind of get their footing back and there's no better time than the present. Oh, exactly. And they, they seem to shine in the postseason. I've watched them work games as an official broadcast games and they seem to, their true colors seem to come really flowing out in the postseason under Wayne Sackett, who went to all deep in the playoffs, went to Camp Randall several times, won a state championship. And uh, Justin Yane is uh, doing a great job, too, of taking his team into the postseason. I don't know how many different times, though, that they've come into the postseason with a loss like they had against Central, where they gave up over 400 yards and only had 210 of their own yards. Now, when is Bob Gorniak's defense? He's been the defense coordinator for 29 years, given up 400 yards. I don't know if the team ever has. And it was it was really a, a, a matter of Johnny Davis taking over in that game, and and they were able to do everything they wanted to through the air. And so that's going to be a challenge in tonight's game facing Baldwin Woodville. You know, the strength of this West Salem team is through their defense and their running game. Part of what threw them off their game last week, Brendan Holt left in about the late first quarter, early second quarter with an injury. It sounds like he's going to be back tonight, maybe not 100%. But it's still good to have your workhorse 18 touchdown back in the backfield. When you look at what he's done, I really think, and the voting is still to be determined, I think he's going to be unquestionably, in my mind, and I don't vote, but the conference player of the year as a running back. And uh, he just is that dynamic. His statistics will reveal some of those, uh, and you already did, but he really has put the West Salem team on his shoulders offensively and carried him. And you're right, the defense... The identity has always been a, a rallying type of staunch defense. 
And so Baldwin Woodville comes in at tonight's game five and four overall, four and three in the middle border conference. That conference won by St. Croix Central. They're always good, by the way. A very good program. They are number one in Division Six right now. So it's a tough conference. So maybe records are a bit misleading. They, they're coming off of a win last week over Amory, 19 to seven. And so, Terry, tell us a little bit about the Blackhawks of Baldwin Wood. Well, I did a little research and I talked to their head coach too. And uh, he, uh, by the way, his Dan Kiefer, his son, he's been coaching for 29 years, 23 as a head coach, took a little e leave of absence to watch his son play. If you remember, his son played with the Badgers as an offensive lineman, graduated a few years ago, so he went to watch him, but Dan Kiefer has a great uh, resume, coached uh, at River Falls under John O'Grady, coached at the college level, and he's uh, de very, uh, several times, and he is really one of the top coaches in that part of the state. You're right about the middle middle border conference, New Richmond, who Logan plays tonight, Somerset, Baldwin, Woodville, all, maybe not the size of Holman and Central and so on, but play football as well as any of the big teams in the state of Wisconsin. And one of their non-conference losses this year was to perennial powerhouse Edgar, be it, be it a smaller school or not, Edgar has always been in the top of the state, frequently finished the season undefeated. Um, so they've, they've played a tough schedule. This is a good football team. There's a reason why they're in the postseason, and it should be a fun one tonight. But a lot of similarities in the way they, their, their identity on offense. When you look at the stats, uh, 590 yards in the air for Baldwin and Woodville and 1,106 with their legs running. 11 touchdowns there, only four uh, off the passing game. And, and, and look at West Salem, virtually the same, 772 yards passing and 1,160 yards, or 1,716 yards on the ground. So both of them want to keep the ball on the ground. So it's a matter of which team is going to be able to control the clock, control time of possession. That's what both of these teams want to do. It should be a dogfight. It should be a fun one here. We will take a short break, and we are going to come back with some keys to the game and the opening kickoff. You are watching the KQEG TV High School Game of the Week on KQEG TV and KQEGTV.com. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Ho, ho, ho. A little early for Christmas? Not if you're planning a holiday party. Hi, this is Jerry at Big Boar Barbecue. We can cater any size event you may be planning, from just a few friends to 300 or more. Big Boar was voted four times the best caterer in La Crosse County because of our delicious food and outstanding service. Call us today and let us help you make your event something you'll never forget. Big Boar Barbecue. Now that's a mouthful. You know that Boyers is a small family business. That doesn't mean it's not fully staffed. Here's our sales department. Purchasing department. Delivery and setup. Warehouse crew. Quality control. Advertising. We've got the best in sales, service, and selection. Come on down and check out Boyers Furniture.
Welcome back, everybody. Just getting set for kickoff here at West Salem High School. Carl Greenfield and Terry Erickson. Terry, what are some of the keys to tonight's game? I think physicality is number one. The physical approach, swarming to the ball, rally to the ball, party at the ball, that is the uh, really the staple of West Salem could be a factor, uh, the physicality versus the Warrior uh, the, or the Blackhawk offense. I think minimizing the, the special teams is one of the strengths of the Blackhawks. So I think that is a key. And, uh, of course, turnovers is always a key. But turnovers that result in good field position and scoring is another one. And I think that if the Blackhawks can stay on the upside of the turnover uh, statistic, I think they have a chance. And uh, I think the, the grinding out um, that West Salem likes to do on the ground, uh, and, and, of course, so do the Blackhawks, but I think the strength will be Brendan Holt and uh, the – a methodical way that the Panthers run their offense. All right, West Salem re will receive the kickoff off to the far sideline, fielded at about the 15, coming across the field. That is, that's number three, Dalton Shams, and he returns it across to about the 32-yard line where West Salem will take over first and 10. Tackled by Brent Paulson, number 80, and we'll see the Justin Yane, the offensive coordinator, head coach. We'll see the, him unveil his offense as we start this uh, Division I first-round playoff. The Blackhawks are coached by Dan Kiefer. You were mentioning him earlier, his son, a former Wisconsin Badger. Big part of this offense, of course, is Noel Glassmaker, uh, Frydenut, and uh, Sh Shilpson, and Connor Stranis, that offensive line. Man in motion, Wopat takes the snap, option pitch to Holt. Holt tries to cut it outside, and he gets a little bit of an angle and is tossed out of bounds after a gain of about four. Boy, Grady Maccabee won't get credit for the tackle, but he strung him out and made him go east and west, and his teammates got there and only uh, four yards on first down. That is what Baldwin Woodville is going to want to try and do. Keep Brennan Holt from going north and south. You did, you mentioned east-west and that's the direction you want someone that big to have to go. He's such a punishing runner too. We've watched him many times over the years and uh, he, that's just his strength. Two receivers right, one to the near side. Handoff goes to Holt off the left-hand side and nowhere to go. Might have actually lost a yard there. Well Got right to the line of scrimmage. Well defended too. Number, tackle by number 52 who's not on our program. We always get these numbers that changes and we'll have to try to get that from the coaches here up in the press box. Third and six now, early going. 33 yard line. Baldwin Woodville in a, in a 52 defense, which has been uh, their strength too, their defense as we've seen the last first two plays. Well, Pat back to pass, quick hitch. Finds Trenton Foreman, who's fighting to try and get to a first down. He's going to be short. Gain of about four on the play. Going to bring up fourth and short, fourth and two. When Joe Wopat decides to throw, certainly Trenton Foreman is his key player. Deep threat, runs the hitch well. 32 catches, 500 yards, three TDs. Look One of the for, top receivers in the area. Yeah, look for him to be part of that offense. Fourth and two, Theric Roberts is back to punt. Alex Bishop, the return man, number two. A low line drive punt to the near sideline and it takes a tumble out of bounds at the 42 yard line where the Blackhawks will take over first and 10. Blackhawks offense, they run a multiple set spread power. We'll see uh, them try to again establish the running game and use the pass on uh, unpredictable down and distance. 10.25 left in our first quarter. Again, it's a beautiful night here. It is. Again, Bob Gorniak, 29 years, a defensive coordinator, a good friend of mine. Here, their base set, 3-4, as we unveil the offense for the Blackhawks. Two receivers right, eye formation. Handoff goes to the back, and not a lot of running room. That's Andrew Klopp with the carry. First guy to meet him, number 30 right there, Ethan Olsen, who's 
played well the entire year. Leading tackler on this Panther defense. Yeah, some breaking news too. They're one of their key players, Jake Lindquist, all conference injured it last week will not play and uh, that could be a, certainly be a factor all conference on both sides of the ball Lindquist with 467 yards and six TDs on the ground this year so that is a huge loss jet sweep action and strung out and stopped in the backfield Carl so many teams run that jet sweep Logan loves it. Ethan Olsen again on the tackle and the key defensively is hold your ground and get pen, gap penetration. Did it perfectly. Two tackles already, two plays, Ethan Olsen. Ross Romehild, the quarterback, was on the carry there. 5'9", 135 pound junior. Romehild now with a third and 11. Back to pass, rolling to his right and he's looks like he's gonna tuck and run and he's got some room and he's got a first down. A big run there for Ross Romehild. He has he has not run that often. Driven out of bounds by number 35, Terry Roberts. But when you look at his statistics, Romehild, uh, 461 yards through the air, four TDs, four interceptions. But last week played extremely well, 145 yards in that win in that middle border conference. First and 10 now. 42-yard line of the Panthers. Eye formation again. Romehild takes the snap, hands back, and Klopp is stopped again. Nowhere to go. Wow, right at the point of attack, number 55 meets him right there, John Glassmaker. He'll, he'll be an all-conference performer too, by the way. He is just on both sides of the ball, plays left guard, number 55, all conference last year, linebacker. I mean, he just really under, knows where the ball is. Glassmaker gets the play from the sidelines. That's gonna bring up a second and nine. Now a tight formation here. Back handoff to Klopp. Get some forward momentum, a nice run there. Gets down to about the 36 yard line. Clot got some nice blocking that time by Thomas, Thomas Albrights. And he, in fact, I talked to his dad a little before the game and he said, I'm pretty proud of that guy. Coach on the field, senior number 51. Chewy Lee, the right guard. Jake Carlson, the left guard. And probably the best blocker for the Blackhawks, Robert Crowley, top returner. Hunter Clausen, the right tackle. Third and four, another tight formation here. And handoff goes to Klopp, tries to bounce it outside. He's got the angle and he's got the first down. Ran through the tackle of number 28, Brandon Lund, and that's not easy to do. That's not common for sure. Brandon Lund, another good performer for this Panther defense. Defensive line too for the uh, Panthers, Tever Troush, you'll see Stranus and Hess and Dylan Noll, linebackers Roberts, Lon Olsen, Glassmaker, and, and the back unit, Barr, Foreman, Wolpat, Shams, and Young. Back handoff goes to Klopp, and he's got some running room. Runs a man over, and he's taken down at about the 10-yard line. That's a big run for Andrew Klopp. Boy, a good lesson right there in keeping your shoulders down. Ran over Joe Wolpat. And Joe Wolpat starts on both sides of the ball, of course, but his size didn't really tackle too high. And whoa, just put him right on his back. And Andrew Klopp, a load to take down, 6'1", 205 pounds. Now we got first and goal, 10 yard line. Hands off to the fullback there. That's number 20, Jordan Bonte. Just kind of wrestled down that time by uh, a kind of unorthodox, unorthodox tackle by Trevor Troush. Trevor Troush, a senior, number 58, defensive end for the Panthers. Second and goal from the 11-yard line now. 6.44 left in our first quarter. Still no score. Single backfield, double wing. Man goes in motion, pitch. 
and trying to get an angle, and that's Bishop, and we got a penalty flag. It's the first time we're gonna see our stripes do their thing tonight, as we have an indication of a holding penalty against the Blackhawks. Trevor Troush again holding his spot, keeping his shoulders square and making the hit, a sure tackle. Nice job by Trevor Troush, the senior. That's gonna knock Baldwin Woodville back. Gonna bring up second and goal way back at the 24 yard line. Holding on that, in the interior of that offensive line. It was the first time we saw motion out of that double wing formation. Very familiar to those of you who have watched the Holman Vikings in the past. I formation, two receivers left. Blitz coming up the middle, and Klopp waits for his blockers, and he's taken down, gets a gain of about three. Good block that time by number 62, Robert Crowley, who's been injured part of the season and back this week. When, when the Blackhawks go for, on short yards, look, look for them to go behind Albrechtson, Chewy Lee, and Crowley, three really uh, a technique solid blockers for Baldwin Woodville. Third and goal, 21 yard line. Takes a snap, back to pass, little jump throw, and taken down at about the seven yard line. It's complete. Finds his tight end there. We used to call that a just a quick look in pass, and that's really what it was. Just a, a quick uh, skinny post across the middle, over the linebacker's head in front of the defensive back. It was Zachary Nielsen that caught the pass, and we're gonna see a kick here from Robert Crowley. Going to be a 24-yard attempt. Bishop the holder. Kick is up, and it's way long enough, and it is good. Well, he's an all-conference performer last year, and I'm sure this year I'm not surprised at that. That's a strength of the Blackhawks. Well, we're going to take a quick break as they change sides. 3 to nothing, Baldwin-Woodville. You're watching high school football on KQEG-TV. Not every game's a winner, but if you want to turn that frown into a smile, stop by Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill in West Salem for delicious post-game food. Their homemade 16-inch unlimited topping pizza for just $12 will put a smile on everyone's face. Stop in on Taco Tuesday or Wednesday for $2 burgers. Open every day at 11 a.m. with great lunch specials. For 40 years, Hunter's has had a rich tradition of serving the families of West Salem with great food at reasonable prices. Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill, Leonard Street and downtown welcome back everyone 443 to go in our first quarter beautiful night here in West Salem much more balmy than last week yeah we're, <laughs> we are we the truck rolls east to Oshkosh tomorrow for a huge game UWL versus Oshkosh Oshkosh one of the top teams in the country and the the weather uh, does not look good. No, it looks looks like it's going to be maybe low 40s at best. And windy. And two years ago when we were there, we out, were outside. And it was 80 degrees. We sat on the roof. A beautiful, sunshiny day. Fortunately, we're going to be in the box tomorrow for the 130 kickoff. End over end kickoff. Takes a bounce, and then it's grabbed at about the four-yard line by Ethan Olson. Tries to get something going, and... Not a lot of room to run, and they're going to have some tough field position now back at about the 16-yard line. Well, great coverage. Logan Butler doing a great job of hustling down number 45, the uh, 5'11 senior. One of the strengths of UWL is their special teams. I mean, with Simoncheck and w the way they cover punts and, and, and the way they cover kickoffs, I mean, it's just incredible. And uh, that is certainly a strength. I hope that they, they come to play tomorrow in Oshkosh. That's going to be a tough matchup, as it always is. Um, you, you were talking about the weather for tomorrow. My dad and my brother are going to the Wisconsin-Illinois football game tomorrow, and they think they're going to freeze their buns off. Yeah, my, so. my grandchildren <laughs> are going to that game, too, along with my son. First and 10, 16-yard line. 
Fake the jet sweep. Wolpat keeps it himself, and he's going to get a gain of about three. Just a little read option, too, Carl, trying to find that gap. And uh, Central does that so well with Davis, and the so many teams run that read option. I, I was so impressed with Sparta's win against Aquinas last week. Not just the overall score, but Ryan Wisniewski's ability to run the read option, the zone read, I mean, that guy, uh, as a junior, he's going to rival Johnny Davis for the top quarterback in the conference next year. Sparta, Second of course, and eight. in the playoffs too, Carl. Handoff goes to Holt, and he gets a little bit of room and gets a gain of, we'll call it three. Some tough yardage. Maybe four. Tough yardage right up the middle too. Jaden Williams making the hit. The defensive end, the 5'10 senior. Third and three, officially. We're talking about the statistics of Brendan Holt. Uh, sat out one game, a game we covered because he was uh, supposedly had a, a illegal hit and was thrown out of the game, had to sit a game. Shouldn't even have happened. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know what happened there, yeah, but were, we were there. We were. Hand off to Holt, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. He's going to be about a yard short there. It was disgusting, actually, tackled by Zach Nielsen. We'll move on from there, but Brendan Holt just so valuable. Uh, 18 TDs on the run and one, one TD off the air. I mean, he just does everything. 19 TDs. The, the team TDs in 2018, 29. He's got 19 out of the 29 TDs. Yeah. Roberts doing the punting, another line drive kick, takes a bounce at the 45 yard line and keeps tumbling and inside the 35 where it's picked up at the 34 yard line. A favorable bounce for the Panthers there. Good bounce. And, you know, the, 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 the punts that are not returnable, directional punts and punts that just are, the, the return team does not have an opportunity. That's what happens at UWL so much with uh, their kicking game certainly is uh, one of their strengths. Ryan Byrne, one of them. Sean Parker, two of the better kickers in the conference. Of course, Ryan Byrne played four years on this field. Yes, he did, and he was one of the best in the conference. That's why he's at UWL. First and 10, 34-yard line. Spread formation here. Handoff goes to Klopp and fights his way across to about the 39 yard line, gain of five there. Coming up from the bottom of the pile, number 58, Trevor Trouch, been on the last three tackles. Trevor Trouch, a busy man on the defensive side. Solid defense too, I'll tell you, when you look at uh, their linebackers, Glassmaker, Olsen, Roberts, and Brandon Lund, four of the best in the conference. Rome Hill takes the snap, hands off to Klopp. He's got some running room, and Wopat is going to be the last man to take him down, but a big run there. And another first down for the Baldwin-Woodville Blackhawks. Yeah, nice block by Chewy Lee, the 5'8 junior on that left side. When you're defensive back and you know the size of Wopat, about 140 pounds, if that, he has to make tackles it, at the third level, uh, there's a problem. That's the second run of 20 plus yards there for Andrew Klopp. Down to the 37 yard line, first and 10. Back to pass, fakes the screen and now actually throws it and it's incomplete. Just trying Looking to, for Alexander Bishop. Trying to run a swing pass out of the backfield. Central loves to do that with uh, Stephen Cross, who had a great night on this field a week ago. Good coverage again by the Panthers. Yeah, I would agree. I, I would say Stephen Cross was probably the player of the game last week. Yeah. Had a, had a magnificent game. Two touchdowns on the ground, one through the air. Should have got better media coverage in the paper, too, for the job that he did, but uh, unfortunately he didn't. Klopp takes the handoff and gets taken down at about the 34-yard line. Klopp is going to have to be the workhorse. If you missed what we said early in this broadcast, the key player for the Blackhawks, uh, 
not playing, and that's Jack Link or uh, Jake Lindquist, all conference on both sides of the football, and that is a huge loss. Third and eight, Lindquist. just under a minute to go in the first quarter. Six TDs on offense, 61 tackles on the other side. Snap, handoff to Klopp, and he's going to be taken down. And we're right in the edge of four-down territory here. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Blackhawks go for it. Boy, Klopp, 400 yards and four TDs coming into this game. And Two-way all-conference player also, a captain, is getting a, the bulk of the carries here early in this game. That was already his 10th carry in tonight's game. Want to take a look at one of our sponsors for tonight's game. Schumacher Kish has been serving the lacrosse area for over 50 years. Traditional services or prearranged funeral plans, it's comforting to know they'll be there when you need them. Schumacher Kish in lacrosse, La Crescent, and on Alaska. Always a good sponsor. Thank you for being on board. Ever since I have broadcast these games, and it's probably been 15 years now, Boyers and Schumacher Kish have been along with us uh, uh, every season. That says a great deal. It's been about it? seven years for me, so uh, every every year they're always on board. Boyers, like you mentioned, Battery Mart with the Donsky family. Yep. Just uh, there's not there's not Schneider a lot. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Yeah, boy, I guess so. Board, How could I miss so, them? Yeah. When you go when you travel the Midwest, there's not a lot of areas with high schools that have coverage like we do here on KQEG. Yeah, I, I don't think people in our area realize, you know, that there isn't this kind of coverage all around. And we have a field goal attempt here. This will be a 49 yarder. The kick is up. It is long enough, but it is just wide left. What a kick though by Robert Crowley. Jeez, I guess so. He got his leg into it. The timing was perfect. The snap was there. The hold was there. And wow, that was impressive. I was expecting the offense to remain on the field, but they brought the kicking unit out there. And for good reason, there's, there's a reason why Robert Crowley is an all-conference kicker. You know, you can't fault anyone for missing a 49-yard kick. No, even, even at the NFL level, that's a tough kick. Best offensive lineman, of course, plays on the blind side, that left tackle, and, and a tremendous kicker. There's a gift right there in Robert Crowley, the senior. Maybe he'll be a Badger next year. Of course, Very they, well could be. They need some players after getting trounced by Michigan last week. You know, I was I was out and about, and I didn't see any of that game last week. Wolpat back to pass. Fires to the far sideline. Good coverage and complete. A great grab there, diving for Caleb Young. Yeah, Caleb Young, certainly we don't talk much about him, number 12, the senior, but he is an important part of this offense. Doesn't get the ball a lot. Uh, oh, by the way, and you didn't, you weren't watching, the, I wasn't watching the game either because we were broadcasting this Stevens Point game and you were probably crying your eyes out. I was not thrilled with after that. I, the was, game. I was glad I didn't get, I didn't see much of it. I checked in on it here and there, and then when I saw late fourth quarter, 63 to 20, I was like, well, that one's over. Of course, in case our viewers don't uh, know what I'm talking about, he's a point graduate. I, I'm a pointer, and I will always support. You don't have to fly to Kansas City 
to get great barbecue. Ho, ho, ho. A little early for Christmas? Not if you're planning a holiday party. Hi, this is Jerry at Big Boar Barbecue. We can cater any size event you may be planning, from just a few friends to 300 or more. Big Boar was voted four times the best caterer in La Crosse County because of our delicious food and outstanding service. Call us today and let us help you make your event something you'll never forget. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. No matter where you are, it's easy to find Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating, Lacrosse. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Here you are. Right now, get over $1,700 in rebates and utility credits with your new Carrier Infinity Heating and Cooling System. Call or visit us online to ask more about our Gold Star Maintenance Program. Schneider Heating, West Salem. Schneider Heating around West Salem. Here you go. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. No matter where. Welcome back, everyone. Early second quarter, just getting started here at the beautiful West Salem football complex. Second and six for the Panthers. Will Pat with the option pitch goes to Holt, and it's strung out, and he's taken down after a gain of maybe a couple. Blackhawk defense. Right, number 20, the first one there, Jordan Bonte. The key to running that option is to create a defensive end, and uh, the key to defending it is making the quarterback pitch it early, and that's what that's the Blackhawks did on that play. Well defended, okay. certainly. Third and three. Well, pad in the gun, man goes in mo motion, handoff goes to Ethan Olsen, who is met in the backfield and then taken down. We got a penalty flag, a whole mess of everything there. Well, I count five white jerseys on that tackle, led by Jaden Williams, number 84. Talk about good pursuit. It looks like a penalty on the Panthers, and it is a hold. I would be surprised if this one isn't declined to force a fourth down. And they are going to decline it. Olsen lost a yard or two there. Call it a loss of one. Brings up fourth and four. And Theric Roberts is going to come on to punt it away. Alex Bishop, the 5'9 senior, back at his own 38-yard line, ready to return this one. Roberts averaging 37 yards a punt. And he goes away from Bishop again, and it takes a bounce and a little friendly roll for the Panthers and down at the 37-yard line. Take a look at another one of our sponsors for tonight's game, Rish Heating and Air Conditioning in West Salem. Offers geothermal heat pumps, a complete line of high-efficiency gas, oil, and electric furnaces, being cold is no fun, so rely on the experts at Rish Heating and Air Conditioning in West Salem for all your HVAC needs. Being cold certainly is no fun. That, that's that's nope. as tr no truer <laughs> statement has ever been made. And the older you get, the more profound it is. Handoff goes to Klopp, dances across, and is taken down at the 39-yard line, gain of a couple, and Klopp a little slow to get up after that one. Boy, they can't afford to lose him. Tackled by number 58, Trevor Troush again on his way to be player of the game if he continues this for the Panther defense. Caleb Young assisted on that tackle. Second and eight, Klopp remains in the game. Back to pass, fakes the handoff. And overthrown, looking for Alex Bishop. Good coverage again by the Panthers. Principally Joe Wolpat over there. Good pressure. Early pressure. Bob Gorniak sending a couple linebackers. This officiating crew, by the way, from the Blair area. Recognized several of them from that part of the country. Not too far from here, of course. From a play calling standpoint, I always wonder why, you know, so many teams will run on first down and then throw on second and long, and then it goes incomplete, and now they're at a third and eight. 
And Bishop takes a snap, takes it himself, and he's wrestled down in the backfield. Wrestled down by Brendan Holt, who hold, held his ground, didn't allow that uh, sprint out action by the Blackhawks and forcing them to punt. Brendan Holt was not in the uh, starting lineup, number 44, because of his injury last week on the defensive side, but on a critical third down, he certainly appears. And back to punt is, that's Robert Crowley. And a high booming kick fielded by Trenton Foreman, and he makes one man miss. Foreman going out towards our sideline here, and he gets pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line. A nice return by Trenton Foreman, but what a kick by Robert Crowley. Yeah, he's an all-conference performer, too. Thomas Albrightson, number 53, ran him out of bounds. Panthers take over. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to go in the second quarter here. Haven't seen a real impressive drive so far for the West Salem Panthers. Brennan Holt has been limited to 14 yards on five carries. That's certainly, I'm sure that total will increase as the game goes on. Well, I mentioned Dieter Antoni on the staff here again after he left on Alaska in charge of the special teams. Back to pass, Wopat, a, a slant and go, and Trenton Foreman comes down with it. What a catch. And a good patient throw from Joe Wopat. Waited for the route to materialize. And the Panthers are in business. Alex Bishop on the tackle. Well, we talked about the ability of, uh, of Trenton Foreman. And that's his 34th catch of the season. He can go long. He's a deep threat. He's a sure-handed short receiver. And uh, proves his speed down the sideline on that play. Reminds me a little bit of a young Larry Fitzgerald. Good what? hands, good route runner. Boy, do, but I, do I remember when he, him? When he was young, he had that speed too. Obviously he's much more of a possession receiver, almost a tight end at this point. Foreman now to the far sideline. Handoff goes to Holt off the right edge. Stiff arms a man and he's pushed out of bounds. Holt's got the ability, he's got the size, he's got the, uh, he's got the uh, ability to go to the second gear, but he also uses good moves, which a lot of young people don't. Now, there was a great example of a straight arm, and he got a couple extra yards by getting that arm and hand out in the defender's face. Second and seven, 28-yard line. Handoff goes to Holt off the left side, and he's got some running room. Good block on the edge by Trenton Foreman, and he's roped down at the five-yard line. Big gainer for Trenton Foreman. Well, the play was designed or to go outside. Brent, Brennan Holt, excuse me. Yeah, Warwick wire on the tackle, but really no match on that outside for the speed of Holt. People always talk about the power of Brennan Holt and his ability between the tackles, but... Get him some open speed, and he can take off. First and goal, five-yard line. Takes the handoff, and there goes Holt, and he's in. Well, I got a great block on the left side by number 64, Ryan Schlimgen, to spring him into the end zone. Pretty obvious near the end zone who's going to get the ball. We've seen it several times this year and not any surprise that he scored on that particular play. His uh, 19th touchdown too, Carl. Five yards out, Wolpat on to attempt the extra point. First time we've seen him and the pitch goes back to him. He's got a receiver in the back of the end zone and it's caught. Two-point conversion, and that one goes to Brandon Lund. Well, when you when he's lining up to kick, you know it's not going to be a kick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, 
<laughs> and uh, well, of course, I'm sh I would doubt that Baldwin Woodville thought that because they don't know he's not the kicker necessarily. At least uh, it was a surprise and a good surprise. And the Panthers have had some inconsistencies at the kicker position, so that was a good moment there for a two-point conversion. Makes it 8-3. to three. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back. You're watching high school football on KQEG-TV. You know that Boyers is a small family business. That doesn't mean it's not fully staffed. Here's our sales department. Purchasing department. Delivery and setup. Warehouse crew. Quality control. Advertising. We've got the best in sales, service, and selection. Come on down and check out Boyer's Furniture. Welcome back, everybody. Carl Greenfield, Terry Erickson here. Second quarter. Panthers take the lead on a five-yard touchdown run. And a two-point conversion makes it 8-3 to three with 8.17 to go in the quarter. Update from other MVC teams. Logan down 7-0 in the first. And uh, Central marched down against Oregon. Scored after Oregon on their opening possession. 7-7 there in Oregon. Oregon's high school football field is about three blocks from my mom and dad's house. Oh, good. They live in Oregon, Wisconsin. So are I you told them, you know, you're going to go down there and cheer on the Red Raiders. And my mom said, no, it's too cold. <laughs> and a, and then little tumbler kick is fielded and returned all the way to the 40-yard line. David Johnson, the 6'1 senior, returns that one. Nice return, right? Tiptoeing down the sideline. Run out of bounds by Dalton Shams. We haven't gotten a, a score yet from uh, DeForest or other crew working Holman and DeForest. We'll pass that along as soon as we get that. I'm anxious to hear how that game is going. Holman certainly one of the strongest teams in the uh, in their particular pairing list of teams in their bracket. DeForest holds a 14-6 lead in the first quarter over Holman. There you go. Handoff goes to Klopp, who's met after a few yards, and he'll be stood up and stopped. Tackle by Glassmaker and Dylan Noel. Three-yard gain on that one. Holman had his, like many teams in week nine, week ten, and so many injuries. Of course, the uh, injury factor it, with Holman in their quarterback situation, yet they were able to rebound and still have a great season winning the MBC. On their third quarterback, but that didn't stop them. Man goes in motion, fakes the pitch, and not much running room there. Tried to run an inside trap, Carl, and against a team that penetrates so quickly like the Panthers do, very difficult to run. And Brandon Lunn right there making the tackle. Logan Butler on the carry, lost a, a yard there. Number 45, 5'11", senior. Third and eight, 42-yard line. Back in the gun. And it's Bishop making the throw. And a tiptoe catch on the sidelines. What a grab. And that's number 80, Brent Paulson. Knew exactly where the sideline was. Got a big first down. First down to the 49-yard line. Completing it just past the line to gain. Romehill gives to Klopp, and he gains a couple before he's taken down. Uh, trying to run behind number 51, uh, Jake Carlson, and he gets some yardage and on first down, he's second and nine. And we've seen the wrinkle in the offense from Baldwin Woodville with the two quarterback setup. Romehill, the primary quarterback, Bishop 
plays receiver a lot of the time, but does come in at quarterback at times. Little single wing action. Handoff goes to Klopp, and he's met before he can go anywhere. Boy, gap integrity, such a big part of the Panther defense. That time again, Glassmaker, but that's, that's what the, the Panthers did at Logan, a game that we worked. They just overwhelmed at the point of attack. They overwhelmed in the neutral zone. Their defense just really ate up the Rangers. Consequently, the Rangers really struggled and couldn't get any offense going. Calvin Maven, their quarterback, was like, running for his oh life. Oh my gosh! I call him the next day. It's like Calvin, are you, are you, are get you a, breathing? Are you <laughs> it was just incredible how many times he got hit and hit hard. Rome Hill rolls to his left, delivers a ball a little too high and almost reeled in by Alexander Bishop, but incomplete. Going to bring up fourth and nine, and the punting unit will come on. Ethan Olson stunted from his outside and just was right in the face of Rome Child and disrupted his rhythm and his vision. Trenton Foreman back to return this one. Robert Crowley the punter. Foreman standing right in front of his own 10 yard line. A low snap and still able to get it away is Crowley and Foreman, and there's a penalty flag. We got another one fired in. I'm, and there's another one. I think they're all calling the same penalty, yeah, but pretty they easy. wanted to cover it. Pretty easy penalty on Aaron Barr, number 22, blocking the back. Yeah. So the Panthers are going to have tough field position to start here. Three flags thrown in the same spot. That sends a pretty good message. I think they got their point across. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just difficult on the special teams to get your get around and make sure you're not uh, hitting uh, a player in the back. That time it was so apparent, though, that uh, Barr never got he never really worked himself in a good angle at all. Going to bring this one way back to about the ten yard line. Uh, call it the nine. So the Panthers with 92 yards before pay dirt. Long way to go. Think that back judge is back far enough? <laughs> Standing almost in midfield, I think he's... I've seen deep back judges, but I don't know if I've ever seen one that deep. They're respecting the throwing arm of Joe Wopat. <laughs> I don't think so. Handoff goes to Holt. Gets a couple of blocks and gains a couple yards. An impressive stop by... The, the Blackhawks on that play. Gain of four there. Zachary, Gonna bring up second and six. Zachary Nielsen in on that tackle. Well, we'll be with you deep into the playoffs here as long as teams from the area advance. That's we will, right. We will be broadcasting hopefully into Early November. Cover as many as we can. And the pile goes, and there goes Holt. Holt has Green in front of him, and he's being chased, but I don't think they're going to get there. It's a touchdown for Brennan Holt, 87 yards. Yeah, and once he gets to the second level, Carl, uh, and then consequently the third level, you might as well forget it. Boy, you can see he might have been injured last week. But I think he's 100% tonight. And that is the biggest sound we've heard from the Panther crowd tonight on the big touchdown run. 87 yards for Brennan Holt. 20th touchdown on the ground for the senior. Somebody get the man some oxygen after that one. That's a long run. I don't care who we are. Yeah, you would need some oxygen. I may need some, but somebody that's 18 years old. And yeah, he's probably shape, okay. Yeah. yeah, he can continue. Oh, West and West Salem calls a timeout. <laughs> Gives their fans a chance to cheer him a little harder. Take another look at one of our sponsors for tonight, Advanced Cargo in West Salem. Whether you need something sent next door 
or around the world, Advanced Cargo of West Salem can do it. Advanced Cargo is a proud sponsor of West Salem Panther Ath Athletics, and they say, Go Panthers! I think I would venture a guess that that is the longest run of the season for Brennan Holt. He could have won another 30 yards too. I think so, he, he had the step and had the space. Over a thousand yards coming into tonight's game and he's gonna be well over a, a hundred yards tonight and probably pushing the 200 yard mark so long as he stays in the game and rushing the football. And two point conversion attempt it appears. Offense remains out there, Wopat and Holt in the backfield. Takes the snap, pitches to Holt. Gets a block and a stutter step. There's a penalty flag, however. The two-point conversion is good, but... Hold on the edge, Carl. It's going to be called back. Panthers are going to... Have to back up quite a bit for this conversion attempt. I would think you would accept that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a no-doubter right there. I don't there. think you got to have a conversation with the captain to determine that situation. I think if you, uh, if you had a captain that declined that penalty, you would no he'd longer be, be stripped captain. of his captainship. <laughs> he would. So they're going to attempt a two-point conversion from the 15-yard line after the holding call. And an end around. It's going nowhere. And Ethan Olsen's going to be taken down. So the two-point conversion attempt is no good, but the Panthers retain the lead 14-3 to with four minutes and ten seconds left in our second quarter here. Can hear the West Salem crowd cheering their boys on. Got a chance to talk to Joe Hess's dad and mom this evening before the game started, and they they wanted to thank us profusely for our coverage of the games. Well, you're welcome, the Hess family. Absolutely. We talked about Joe and how how well he's done on the defensive side of the football this season. He sure has, 52 tackles, playing nose tackle number 24. Quick, athletic, and uh, coachable. Just does everything right, and one of the leading tacklers for the Panthers. Panthers will do the kicking. Last time, David Johnson returned one. Pretty good return, tiptoeing the sidelines. Here's the kickoff, end over end. A more traditional kick this time, takes a bounce and is fielded at the 20 yard line. And Johnson is taken down. Not much of a return for that one and good coverage by the Panthers. Caleb Young, if we showed that again on replay, which we do, by the way, when we work uh, the college games, we show a replay, you'd show him sh having his shoulders perfectly square, taking on the block, holding his ground, fighting through the block, and making the tackle. Everything you teach. First and 10, 22 yard, 22 yard line, it looks like, 22 and a half. That's why Caleb Young is on the special teams and on the defensive unit. The one thing that they never did paint on this field are any of the hash marks. They just have the little ticks every five yards, but they don't have the individual yardage markers. Pass is complete and is pushed out of bounds. That's David Johnson. 
Johnson with his first catch of the night. It's going to be just short of a first down. Johnson running through the tackle of John Glassmaker, and that's not easy to do. He's going to be an all-conference player. Glassmaker with 45 tackles. All-conference in 2017. Returning starter. Nice passing play. Brings up second and two, 31-yard line. Handoff goes to Klopp, and he's tripped up right away. Going to be just short of a first. Glassmaker again making that tackle right at the knees. And my meeting with Mike Schmidt this morning in preparation for tomorrow's game, and he revealed a couple more injuries on that defensive side of the football, which is going to be a challenge to replace them tomorrow in Oshkosh. Oshkosh, that will be, they'll have to have a Herculean effort in order to beat the Titans, I think, tomorrow. Officials call for a measurement here. And the, he is going to get a first down. I thought he was called short of it, but it will be a first down. Little extra effort. A lot of people from lacrosse in Milwaukee tonight watching the Brewers. You've been watching that series, I I imagine? have been. Well, I know my brother and two son-in-laws are there tonight watching that game. First and 10 now, 32-yard line. Blitz up the middle. Rome Hill rolling to his right. Fires downfield and incomplete. Yeah. I think the Blackhawks wanted a penalty flag for interference, I don't but think no so. call. Andrew Klott with a great block, though, to give uh, him time to throw, but I, I didn't see pass interference either. I see the coaches on the sideline um, asking for that, uh, but I don't even think it was close. It'll bring up second and 10. We got 337 left in the first half. Last week, Art Fay and I were here with Ryan, and we were wearing our winter coats and <laughs> stocking caps and gloves, and now just wearing a light jacket yeah. as the Panthers take a timeout. We talked about Holt just playing one side of the ball, Carl. Well, now he's in on defense again. So in certain situations, you see him number 44 on the defensive side of the ball. Take a look at another one of our sponsors for tonight's game. American Family Insurance. And your West Salem agent, Jim Quinn. See Jim for protecting what you've achieved so you can dream fearlessly. Jim is your star certified American Family Insurance agent at 123 East Hamilton Street in West Salem. You know, as we bring football games, basketball games, sometimes baseball games, Holman, uh, West Salem always have to have an abundance of sponsors to help us with these broadcasts. They really support their high school sports. For your apartment, office, or home, Schneider's Blinds and Shades complement any decor. For over 50 years, Schneider's Custom Window Treatments in West Salem has taken pride in providing quality products, experienced helpful advice, and great service, all at affordable prices. Visit them at 505 Brickle Road in West Salem. First time, at least in my experience, that Schneider's Custom Window Treatments has been on board. So yeah. thank you for sponsoring tonight's game. Rome Hild, swing pass incomplete. Looks like they were trying to set up a bubble screen that time, intended for Logan Butler, number 45, and just a not, not a good throw and incomplete. May have been tipped at the line. <coughs> and... Brings up a very difficult third and 10 now. This is when defensive people pin their ears back and go as hard as they can. Knowing Your pass rushers get excited. Oh, they start yeah. salivating. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Back to and pass, Rome Hild, and he gets hit as he throws, but it's complete. He finds his receiver, Johnson. David Johnson with a big catch and run. All the way down to the 40-yard line. Now that was impressive, Carl, because Rome, Rome Hild held, basically sat there in, in the pocket, had about four black jerseys right on him because Gorney, Bob Gorniak, the D.C., sent the house, and he still completed it. 
And a good catch and run there by Johnson after the toss from Ross Romehild. First and 10, 40-yard line of the Panthers. Back to pass, rolling right is Romehild. And he's going to tuck it and run, and he's forced out of bounds after about three-yard gain. Wisely tucked it in and, and decided to keep it. Tegan Hansen, number 32, ran him out of bounds, but poised, knowing no, nobody was open, and decided to try to get something. Didn't get much, but at least didn't throw an INT. He's throwing four interceptions during the season. No gain on that play. Second and 10. Rome Hill back to pass again. Good blitz pickup, and he's firing downfield, and it's out of bounds and overthrown. Good coverage there as well. Yeah, good, good penetration at the line of scrimmage. Good coverage on the backside. 21 for Trenton, Trenton, Trenton Foreman on the coverage. Foreman figures to be in the con conversation for all conference on both sides of the football. Certainly. Back to pass, swing pass, finds Bishop. And Bishop dances his way. Not quite for a first down, but a good gain there. Ran through Brendan Holt that time. Got a good good coverage that time after he made the catch. Four down territory too. Gain of seven on the play brings up fourth and three. And here's the moment of truth for the Panther defense. They'll be keying in on Andrew Klopp, number five. Handoff goes to Klopp, and he stopped. Panthers will take over. Andrew Klopp with nowhere to go. Well, I'll talk about a big stop, too, right up the middle. Glassmaker, the first guy to meet him. The winner of tonight's game will face either Northwestern or Ellsworth, who play in the Middle Border Conference along with Baldwin-Woodville. My, uh, my roommate in college, freshman and sophomore years, was from Ellsworth. The Janky family, John, Jason Janky, one of the coaches up there too, along with uh, the dean of students and girls basketball coach. And if, if Ellsworth is the victor in that game. The winner of this one will have a home contest as they are the lower seed. Got a whistle here, penalty flag, delay a game against the Panthers. Back judge counting from five down to zero and makes that call. Backs him up to the 30 yard line for first and 15 now. Two seventeen left in the first half. Well, Pat, back to pass. Now hands to Holt, and he's got some running room, and he's taken down by his jersey and his neck. Just a little misdirection. And Holt's a little slow to get up there. Possible re-aggravation of that ankle injury from last week. Good tackle by number 51, grabbed his jersey and held on, Jake Carlson. And Holtz is gonna trot off the field here. Theric Roberts and Ethan Olson will pick up some of the slack if Holt is gonna miss some time here. Second and seven, 34 yard line. Wolpat, quick pass, and a quick hit. Wow, there's a, there's a good read. Instincts tried to set up that bubble screen, and number 62 right there. 
Robert Crowley, who's the kicker, making the tackle. A loss of two, that was completed to Justin Barney, the backup quarterback. Third and nine. Got a Brewers score for us yet? I can see if we can wrangle up something there. They're about an hour into their game. Hopefully home field advantage will get a couple wins. Well, they must have started the a little coach. later than expected. They are down one to nothing in the bottom of the first. Brewers are the home squad. We'll be able to see the bulk of that after the conclusion of this game. This game has moved by with some pretty good speed. Both teams staying on the ground pretty regularly. Uh, coming out of the timeout, it'll be third and nine. Minute and 19 seconds le left on the clock. Big third down here for the Panthers. Wolpat back to throw, and an out route for Foreman, and it's picked off. Interception by Alexander Bishop. A great read on that one. Undercuts the route, and the Blackhawks are now in business with a minute 13 to go. Bishop with his fifth interception of the season. Another all-conference returner, number two, Bishop. And you're right, undercut the route. It was underthrown, too. It's a form. very, very long throw for a young quarterback to make that about 15-yard out route. It is a very long throw, and sometimes it can be underthrown. Romehill back to throw. And here comes the rush, and we got a holding penalty, I'm sure of it. Pass is thrown, it's a knuckleball, and it's caught and complete. And for the moment, out at about the three yard line. Looks like a, a number 51, Jake Carlson. That's gonna come all the way back. Jake Carlson on the hole, didn't see it, but uh, Apparently Cliff Thompson did. Boy, that's a heartbreaker after an interception and a, and a big gain on a nice pass. Could have had the momentum swing coming into the locker room, but now all the way back to their own 41 yard line. Backing them up. About 15 yards there. First down and 26, the official down in distance, according to the scorekeepers. And a little swing pass. And taken down, not much running room there. Again, trying to set up that bubble screen to the outside. Gain of about two on that one. David Johnson, the rec receiver on that. Second and 24, we're under 30 seconds to go. Panthers looking for a stop here. Rome Hill back to pass. Rolls to his right, and he's just gonna trot out of bounds. He's actually gonna lose a yard or two there. Flushed out of the pocket by number 50 that time. 50 is Connor Stranus. Stranus, a contributor on both sides of the yeah, ball. His grandfather, a good friend, passed away a few years ago. Athletic director, coach, principal at Melrose Mindoro. Worked a lot of games at Melrose Mindoro when Stan Stranus was there. Third and 26. 17 seconds left. Off coverage a little bit here. Rome Hill back to throw, throws over the middle and it's almost intercepted. The receiver played the defense there. A good job by David D Johnson, otherwise that was gonna be picked off by Joe Wolpat. 
Boy, too many black jerseys around uh, for him to complete that. Brewers lead 2-1, to one. Aguilar 2 RBI, single. So Brewers on top. Eleven seconds. Crowley will do the kicking. Trenton Foreman back to receive it. And it's going to keep rolling as the clock will expire on our first half. So at the half, the score, West Salem 14 and Baldwin-Woodville 3. A good first half here for the Panthers. Gets them in good shape as we go to halftime here in West Salem. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a little bit with some halftime stats and updates. You're watching high school football on KQEG-TV and KQEG-TV.com. No matter where you are, it's easy to find Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating, Lacrosse. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Here you are. Right now, get over $1,700 in rebates and utility credits with your new Carrier Infinity Heating and Cooling System. Call or visit us online to ask more about our Gold Star Maintenance Program. Schneider Heating, West Salem. Schneider Heating around West Salem. Here you go. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Not every game's a winner, but if you want to turn that frown into a smile, stop by Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill in West Salem for delicious post-game food. Their homemade 16-inch unlimited topping pizza for just $12 will put a smile on everyone's face. Stop in on Taco Tuesday or Wednesday for $2 burgers. Open every day at 11 a.m. with great lunch specials. For 40 years, Hunter's has had a rich tradition of serving the families of West Salem with great food at reasonable prices. Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill, Leonard Street and downtown West. Hello, this is Troy Gunderson. I'm the superintendent of schools for the School District of West Salem, and I'm standing here in our beautiful new middle school LMC. This LMC and the rest of our renovations to our middle school were part of four recently completed renovation projects on our campus. We completed a renovation to our bus garage, our swimming pool, our middle school, and our athletic complex. Um, these four projects were connected to four successful referendums and through the prepaying of existing debt and financing these projects at record low interest rates, we were able to complete all of this and lower taxes. Uh, we, we think we hit a home run. As you may or may not know, the school district budget is divided into two main categories. The first category is connected to long-term debt and it covers the four projects that we just talked about. As I noted, the school district has borrowed the borrowed the money to fund these projects and we've locked into a 20-year payment schedule. State law does not allow us to use that money to operate. So we have a separate budget called our operational budget. And that budget funds things like teacher salaries and equipment purchases and utility bills, etc. That portion of our budget is covered, is managed by state law called the revenue limit. And the revenue limit prevents that from exceeding a certain amount. In order to exceed that revenue limit, the school board needs your permission and needs to host another referendum to do that. And while the board has avoided this for many years, after the last five years of the revenue limit being basically the same, um, in, a, in a sense, the school district's out of money in terms of operating. So the school board has decided to hold a referendum in November asking your permission um, to exceed the revenue limit beginning in the year 2020. The upcoming referendum is needed to maintain the services and programs that we offer our students, families, and community. This video is an attempt to explain why the school board decided to host this referendum at this time and the impact of the referendum will have on our students, our families, and our taxpayers. So why did the school district and the board decide on an operational referendum? 2013, our funding stayed at 15.95 and last year we were at 15. So basically the funding is staying the same, but our costs are going up. That's basically like not receiving a pay raise at your job for the past six years, but expected to pay the cost of everything rising. 
but as the costs continue to rise, which is affecting us in health care and insurance costs, funding to offer regionally competitive wages, and that's one of the reasons we're starting to lose some of our key employees, is other areas are able to pay better than we are. Rising costs of supplies, materials, services, and equipment, not to mention the utility costs that have gone up. Increased cost to maintain larger and safer facilities. How is this impacting our district? The costs of our employees are behind area districts. Thus the reason, again, we're losing employees to other areas, they can pay more. Employee benefits have been reduced, eliminated, or cost shifted. Expensive maintenance projects have been delayed. Annual budget deficits are reducing district fund balances. District is forced to host a referendum or to cut our services, which would then impact how our school is seen and how we operate. The School District of West Salem's education-related expenses are the lowest within the 26 school districts in our area. So what about our taxes? The School District of West Salem's mill rate right now is $8.93. Over the past 20 years, we have averaged a mill rate of $9.74. The state average is $9.77 and the regional school districts mill rates, the areas around us, such as Arcadia at $10.85, Bangor is $10.40, uh, Black River Falls is $9.45, Holman, La Crosse, Alaska, they're all higher. But we're at $8.93 and what we're asking is to stay at our average of $9.74. That's increasing at 81 cents per year. So what if the referendum fails? The school district of West Salem's mill rate will decrease down to $8.18. That'll save the taxpayers $75 per year or $6.25 per month on $100,000 worth of property if the community votes no. The state, now with that, the state will no longer increase our funding until the local voters approve a future referendum. Now how do you like that law? That passed last year. We cannot get more funding from the state until you, the voters, approve a future referendum. The school district will make, if we fail, the school district will make one million in cuts, eliminating programs that has made our school district unique. It'll reduce the staff that we have and it delays more maintenance and equipment schedules that we need to maintain. So what if the referendum passes? The school district of West Salem's mill rate will increase to $9.74. That has been our average for the past 20 years. The taxpayers will experience an increase of $81 per year or $6.75 per month on $100,000 worth of property beginning in 2020. Our programs and staff will be maintained. Maintenance projects and equipment will be replaced, will return to the schedule and we'll be staying up to date, plus adding in all of our new programs that are, that's helping make West Salem unique in the area. Hi, my name is Tom Groskoff. I grew up in West Salem. I'm a second generation graduate from West Salem. I have two children who are third generation graduates from West Salem, and I am also a school board member. After graduating West Salem, I moved around Wisconsin to start my career but I have always known that when I started my family, I wanted to move back to West Salem so I could send them to what I believe is the best school district and community around. Our schools have ranked among the best in Wisconsin, earning a national blue ribbon of excellence for our elementaries. All of our facilities have exceeded the state report card. We have stayed one of the most economical school districts in our area as well as in our state. 
when people move to the area, the number one reason they choose West Salem is because of the schools and the hometown community. The education and experience our children get in West Salem is second to none. Our senior exit projects have garnered respect throughout the state. Our automotive program has been drawing kids from our other districts just to attend this class. Our athletes have become a major staple to the area and the community in the state because of our commitment to foster these activities. This has helped to produce athletes who have gone on to the professional leagues. Our fine arts, our CNA classes, the aquaponics program, and the rest of our exceptional programs are what makes West Salem great. If we didn't have you, the community member, neighbor, parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, cousin, the one who volunteers in our community, none of this would have been possible. You have supported this district and community to make it what it is today. On behalf of the school board, the West Salem School District, and as a parent and a person who grew up here, thank you. Let's keep West Salem at the top and moving forward. Please go out and vote this November. Thank you. It's halftime on the KQEG-TV High School Game of the Week. Tonight's game features the West Salem Panthers and the Baldwin-Woodville Blackhawks. We'll return with the second half of tonight's game after these messages. You know that Boyers is a small family business. That doesn't mean it's not fully staffed. Here's our sales department. Purchasing department. Delivery and setup. Warehouse crew. Quality control. Advertising. We've got the best in sales, service, and selection. Come on down and check out Boyer's Furniture. You know that boy. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Ho, ho, ho. A little early for Christmas? Not if you're planning a holiday party. Hi, this is Jerry at Big Boar Barbecue. We can cater any size event you may be planning, from just a few friends to 300 or more. Big Boar was voted four times the best caterer in La Crosse County because of our delicious food and outstanding service. Call us today and let us help you make your event something you'll never forget. Big Boar Barbecue. Now that's a mouthful.
Welcome back, everyone. It is halftime here in West Salem. Panthers have a 14-3 lead. Some scores from around our area or out of town for our area teams. Sparta leading Ashland 22 to nothing up in Ashland, right near the, I mean, they're most of the way to Canada up there. Right near Superior. You're <laughs> exactly. right. I've been up there many times working basketball games. DeForest with a 21-13 lead over Holman on Alaska, a 35 nothing running clock lead over Medford at halftime. And Oregon leading Central 17 to 7 right in my parents' backyard. Yeah. And Logan was down 7-0 seven, seven early on. Bangor up uh, Bangor up 14 nothing early and uh, Darlington over Melrose Mindoro early. Some statistics from the first half. Andrew Klopp leading the way, rushing for the Baldwin-Woodville Blackhawks. Had 17 carries for 79 yards. Couple of big 20-plus yarders. But other than that, he's been held in check for the most part. A lot of short gains. Brendan Holt has 11 carries for 139 yards and two touchdowns. That number a little bit inflated by the 87-yard touchdown run by Holt. And passing-wise, Ross Romehild went 5 out of 11 for 62 yards in a first half. And Joe Wolpat was 4 for 5, 44 yards, and an interception. I think if you wanted to look at in, in, as a review to the first half, you'd use one word, and that would be defense. When you look at the defensive line, the linebackers of uh, the Panthers, they have just dominated. They and created and forced third and long many times for the Blackhawks and Blackhawks, and they have not converted. Now on the flip side, I think the, the Blackhawks have played good defense too. They they gave up that long touchdown run by Holt. They gave up another touchdown run by Holt. But overall, their defense has played well. They started strong. They ended strong. With the Panthers having the lead, it just kind of gives them an advantage if this score continues because. Their identity is a methodical running game, using the clock, and that's uh, they they like to play from ahead. And an update from Miller Park: the Brewers lead four to one in the second inning. Had a big first inning there, so a potential game seven if the Brewers can win that one and set up a. Winner take all tomorrow night against the Dodgers. And we'll be able to watch that in the way uh, when we get back from uh, Oshkosh. I hope that materializes. And the winner of that series will take on the Red Sox. They clinched it last night in the ALCS. 4-1 to one over the Astros. And we are underway here for the second half. Johnson fields it at the 15. Makes a man miss and is taken down at about the... 35 yard line. Boy, three black jerseys on the tackle. Number 50, the first guy there, Connor Stranis. And we want to quickly get a shout out to Tony Overbeck, Everbeek, Everbeek Beck, who's next to us in the booth, who's done the PA announcing for 31 years. He started when his daughter was a freshman. She's now like 45. And Jamie, uh, their son, he's just been a, a tremendous asset to the West Salem School District. Does basketball does football, so thank you, Tony Averbeck. First and 10, 35-yard line. Back to pass, Rome Hilled across the middle, and it's broken up, but I think it's caught. It was. Official right there says And yeah. it is. That was caught. An incredible play by Brent Paulson. Looks like they're going to mark him just a tick short of a first down. Gain of nine on the play. I, I like a second and short yardage throwing the ball. Let's see what the Blackhawks do. Man in motion. Fakes the jet sweep. Rome Hill keeps him himself, and he's got a first down. A little read option. You know, Ben Shramsky for the Eagles has improved his running game so much he runs a lot of that read option and uh, his legs really have improved he scored some touchdowns with that and i hope that happens tomorrow and an injured blackhawk on the ground that's david johnson their senior receiver and kickoff returner 
And he seems to be in a lot of pain, favoring his left leg, it appears. So hope for him that's nothing serious. Always a scary moment when young man doesn't get up from the pile. Terry, who do you have as a guest on Seven River Sports coming up here? Well, this is going to be a big week because finally Yelich doubles. Jerry Thompson, my friend, tells me <laughs> from sitting in his living room watching several games on his multiple screens. This week it's Bobby Vandenberg. We are going to look at the career, the 25-year career of Bobby Vandenberg, and who retired recently from Viterbo and now is a volunteer assistant at UWL in their winner's program. So we're going to talk about her years in Colorado, being a high school coach and inducted into the Colorado State High School Hall of Fame last year. Sue and I were able to go. And we're just going to go through kind of the levels of her life. And this is your life on Seven Rivers Sports, <laughs> Bobby Vandenberg. Good to see David Johnson walk off under his own power, favoring that left leg, but... Potential to return. Four receivers, two to the left, two to the right. Rome Hill back to pass. And pump fakes and still looking to throw it. And he throws and it is complete to Paulson again. The magic hands of Brent Paulson reel it in there. Yeah, Paulson with a great catch, but let's just let's give the bulk of the credit to Ross. Rome Hill because he was able to help. He was able to sustain the pressure, escape a little bit, keep his shoulders and eyes downfield. Brendan Holt right in his grill and completes the pass. Second and four after the pass is complete. Low snap and little out pattern and incomplete. That is David Johnson back into the game. Holt giving him a little bit of space, but the ball was not thrown well, so third down. Third and four, 45 yard line. As we get a little light breeze coming in here, still no reason to put on the winter coat. Beautiful evening here in mid-October. Rome Hill back to pass, rolls to his right, fires downfield and way overthrown. Looking in the direction of Logan Butler, but that's gonna bring up fourth and four. Rome Hill again, Carl, forced out of the pocket, but uh, is able to move the pocket, extend the play with his feet. Nice pass completed from our near side official to the other side. Tossing the football all the way across to the Baldwin-Woodville sidelines, throw, show, showing off his throwing arm there. Oh, yeah. Impressive. Crowley punts to Foreman, who fair catches it at the 12-yard line. Good decision, because right in his face was Alexander Bishop. Panthers will take over at the 13, it looks like. Early going third quarter. Carl Greenfield and Terry Erickson here. Ryan Scaife running the camera tonight. First time I've been on this campus since all these improvements as we look to the east, a brand new school, uh, soccer fields further to the east. And this is a, a school district that should be awful proud of the district for approving those funds to do all these great capital improvements. I know quite a few folks in the West Salem School District and they're very pleased with the progress here. Man in motion, Shams, hands off to Holt. Holt gets a gain of about four. Runs into the arms of uh, Nielsen and, and uh, Jake, uh, Brian Degato. Second down and six. We'll pad in the shotgun. Got two receivers out to the right. Hands to Holt and gains a couple. 
And as we mentioned at halftime, except for a couple of long runs, the Blackhawk defense has played well. Going to bring up third and four as Dalton Shams brings in the play from the sidelines. 20 yard line. Wopat takes the snap, back to pass. Rushers in his face, jump throw, and it's going to be intercepted. Intercepted on the far sidelines, and not a good decision there by Joe Wopat. No, Results in a turnover. Oh, Carl, great pressure. Number 51, Jack, Jacob Carlson, along with two other Blackhawks, putting pressure on Wopat. Should have thrown it away. Some good field position here. 30 yard line where the Blackhawks will take over. Eight thirty four left in the third quarter. Man comes in motion, that's Bishop. Takes the handoff, makes a man miss, and he's ridden out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Gain of five there for Alexander Bishop. Uh, bounced by Brandon Lawn right there, also number 35, Thurick Roberts. Boy, Thurick Roberts showed his speed at Swanson Field in that win over Logan. He was impressive. He was my player of the game in that NBC game. The four is 21, Holman 13, the third. Blitz coming off the edge. Rome Hild is hitting the backfield and taken down. It's a sack. Party in the backfield. We talked about swarming to the football, and there it was from the Panthers. Yeah, swarming is right, just eating him up and had no chance to do anything with it. When you have when you're surrounded by four people, the only thing you can do is put your head down and pray. Brings up a big third and eleven. West Salem defense handed a difficult field position and so far holding their ground. Romehild rolls to the left. Blitz is picked up. He's hit as he throws, and it's complete. And it's a touchdown. Touchdown, Blackhawks. Alexander Bishop, 31 yards from Ross Romehild. And again, Carl, he extended the play, sprinting out to his left under intense pressure and was able to throw a strike. Bishop able to get beyond the coverage there. And it looks like the offense is going to remain on the field for Baldwin Woodville. And they're going to go for two. I formation out there, two receivers to the left. Romehild. Little toss over the middle. We got a penalty flag. It is complete to the tight end. Number 11, Zachary Nilsson. Looks like either pass interference or defensive holding, so I think that will stand. I think you're right. And the officials get together, but they're both teams are taking their squads off the field, and we have defensive holding. That's going to be declined, and Baldwin Woodville gets a touchdown and so we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back you're watching high school football on kqeg tv and kqegtv.com not every game's a winner but if you want to turn that frown into a smile stop by hunter's last chance bar and grill in west salem for delicious post-game food their homemade 16 inch unlimited topping pizza for just 12 dollars will put a smile on everyone's face stop in on taco tuesday or wednesday for two dollar burgers open every day at 11 a.m with great lunch specials for 40 years hunter's has had a rich tradition of serving the families of west salem with great food at reasonable prices hunter's last chance bar and grill leonard street and downtown welcome back everyone carl greenfield terry erickson baldwin woodville gets on the board in the third quarter making the score 14 to 11 a 31 yard touchdown pass there from ross romehild 
to Alexander Bishop, and the two-point conversion was good to Zachary Nilsson, bringing it to 14 to 11. And with the kicking prowess of Robert Crowley, it's most certainly a one-score deficit. End over end kick, feel it at about the three-yard line. Here comes Olsen. Olsen makes one man miss, makes another one miss, and he's taken down at the 33-yard line. Big return there for Ethan Olsen, who earlier in the season was wearing number 52 and now wears number 30. And you can see why they wanted to put an eligible number on him so that he can carry the football. Followed his blockers well, good field position. Tackle in the open field by Andrew Klopp. First and 10, 33 yard line. Brandon Lund brings the play in. Come on, line, let's go! Lone receiver off to the far side is Trenton Foreman. Wolpat hands to Holt, and he's upended after the gain of a few. Oh, getting a great block by number 60 that time. Number si number 60, Dawson Freiland. Friedland, the junior. Second and five after the nice run there by Holt. Seven minutes to go in the third. Hand off to Holt again and pushes his way across the 40 yard line, taken down at the 42. Going to be about a yard short of the first down. Look for him to take the ball again here on third and short. My coach used to send the, say, run the same play again until they stop it. That's kind of the way, in the old school approach to coaching. Third and a yard and a half here. Snap, handoff, and first down. Certainly. <laughs> kind of what I said, boy, that offensive line, Noel Glassmaker, Frydenland, Schlimgen, and Stranus. This was before I was playing high school football, but the our, our coach decided on one particular drive to run the exact same play. 12 plays in a row. We were telling the opponents what we're, we're going to run the same play. <laughs> really? 42 dives. Try Let's to stop go. me. Try huh? and stop us. And we ran it for a touchdown. Handoff goes again to Holt, and he's tripped up after a gain of a yard or so. I spent a lot of time in my early years at, uh, after I played helping Logan coach, and Eugene Olson was the head coach. Now, that's a name way out of the past. Won many conference championships, and uh, not, then relocated down to Texas, and, and now I'm hearing he's got dementia and not doing very well, but uh, there's a lot of fond memories with him as the head coach for the Logan Rangers. And prior to him, Greg Madison, who uh, now is a defensive coach from Michigan under Harbaugh. Second and eight. Hand off to Holt again, and he stopped. Gains about a yard and a half. You know, he gets some yardage. That time tackled by number 20, Jordan Bonte. But as I mentioned earlier, this Baldwin-Woodville defense is up to the task. They're a solid team. The thing that Brendan Holt always has going for him is that he keeps his legs churning. Even after first contact, you can't take him down with just an arm tackle. A teaching point, exactly. So many young players uh, don't do that very well, and they would be they would take their game to another level if they did just what you're suggesting. Third and six, Wolpat takes a snap, hands off to Holt, makes a spin move, and he's taken down. He's going to be short of the first down. Tough running up the middle, the offensive line. Uh, doing a nice job, but the second level, that time tackled by number 62, that's Robert Crowley. You talked about him as a kicker, making a nice tackle, all conference on defense. John Glassmaker was a little slow to get up after that play, but he's up and at him, and the punting unit will come on. 
wholesale changes for both sides. Theric Roberts deep to kick it away. West Salem always with the possibility of a <laughs> fake. They don't, and Roberts kicks it out of bounds. Not a great kick there by Theric Ooh, Roberts. No, only and he's kicking himself. Well, a 20 yard kick. Yeah, he was looking for a directional kick to try to get the ball in the corner, but not, not where it ended up. It, it went a direction. It was just not the direction he wanted. And so better field position than the Panthers would have hoped after that punt. Blackhawks take over, 32 yard line. See if the Blackhawks can continue their momentum. They just had a, a great defensive possession. See if they can convert that to something on offense. Had a touchdown on their last drive, short field. Rome Hill takes the snap, hands off to Klopp, who maybe gets about a yard or two. Trying to get something off tackle, but not much running room. Aaron Barr comes up from the backside and makes the tackle, number 22. A little over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Third quarter in DeForest. Holman trails 28-13. Romehild fires for his man, and they say he's got it. Just on the sideline, too. Use the sideline to his advantage. Brent Paulson with another acrobatic catch. Going to be just short of the first down. But Brent Paulson has been showing off his hands and his agility. And his route running skills. Creating separation Absolutely. with the defense. A lot of times running the defense off and coming back and, and uh, getting himself open. Snap, hands to Klopp. Makes one man miss and then he's got a first down and a little bit more. A little inside trap action. Got a good block at the point of attack. Tackle by Aaron Barr. First down, 46 yard line. Aaron Barr's played well this half, 44 tackles. Here comes the blitz, game. picked up by Klopp. Rome Hild rolls to his left, still looking upfield, and he's finally going to be taken down. And a great job by the Panthers to swarm to. Ross Romehild to take him down. Yeah, made him run. He wanted to go to his right, Kyle, and he had ended up having to go the opposite direction and nowhere to go. Tackle by Brandon Lund. Nice play by the Panthers. Good coverage down the field. No receivers to find. Second and 14 after the loss on the sack. Four receivers in the formation. Back to pass, Rome Hild. Fires over the middle, and I'm not sure who that was intended for, but it was incomplete. Possibly intended for number 10, David Johnson at 6-1, senior, but not very close to David Johnson. I think the nearest, the nearest person to it was Joe Wopat. David Johnson turned around after that and kind of threw his hands up in the air like, like I'm open, I, but give I, me the I ball. Don't know, I don't know where that one was going. <laughs> I mean, I'm tall, but I can't really reach that far. He doesn't have 14-foot arms. <laughs> Third and 14 here. Romehild rolling to his left, fires, and incomplete, but we got penalty flags. Yeah, I, I think it was. Contact. Pass interference. Yeah, contact uh, early on by Caleb Young. Caleb Young has had a good night so far on the defensive side, but... First penalty going against him. I hear a lot of people uh, talk about uh, when there's a pass interference call, Carl, the fact that it's not catchable. Well, that's not a high school rule, by the way, so you cannot 
uh, used that college and uh, NFL, NFL rule, rule in high school. And I believe that ball was catchable had he not been tackled in the first place. He just got there too early. First down and 10 across to Panther territory into, into the 42-yard line. Oregon 17, Central 13. No update on Logan. They were down 7-0. I formation. Handoff goes to Klopp. Hit in the backfield and wrapped up and taken down. Loss of a couple there. Nice play. He's tackled by number 55 that time. Glassmaker 22, Aaron Barr there also. They just really get to the ball quickly. I mean, the Panther defense gives up a few yards occasionally, uh, but their, their catch-up speed is just incredible. Well, the Onalaska Hilltoppers are going to come away victorious unless something absurd happens in, in Onalaska. 49 to nothing after three quarters. And we've got some movement across the line, and the Panthers break the line of scrimmage. So pre-snap penalty. I think that's the first or second only pre-snap penalty in this game. Cole Wisniewski having himself a night. It's now 29-0 Sparta. Third touchdown of the game just a moment ago. Cole Wisniewski runs that read option so well and then with Bryce Edwards as a running back. They are I can see why uh, they made the playoffs. Back to pass, Rome Hill. Pump fakes, fires it down the left sideline and incomplete, looking for Bishop. Right into this new track here at uh, the Panther Stadium. Is there a name for this stadium? As far as I know, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't believe it is named, but correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I know right to uh, a little bit to the south of us and the to the west is Damian Miller Field, named after a friend of mine, Damian, who, by the way, is probably in Milwaukee watching the Brewers here. One of his former clubs played for the Diamondbacks, Twins, Cubs, Brewers in his career. Rome Hild, and he's going to run with it, and he's going to get enough for the first down. What a play by Ross Rome Hild. Yeah, he just found a seam, outran the Panther defense. That was highly impressive. Had no one throw it to and said, I'm going to do this myself. One of the, you, you give up a gap, you give up a cavity when you stunt people, and, and the Panthers did that, and he outran those linebackers. First and 10, 30-yard line, Rome Hill in the gun, hands off to Klopp, and he's not going anywhere. John Glassmaker. Barely got the ball off. All over him. Joe Hess in on that one as well. Yeah, we talked about him in the first half. Joe Hess playing uh, at senior, 52 tackles coming into this game. A solid nose tackle. So we've reached the end of the third quarter with a score, West Salem 14. Baldwin Woodville 11. It's going to be a good one. Stick around for the fourth quarter right after this on KQEG TV. Welcome back, everyone. Just the start of the fourth quarter here. Got a nice shot of the cheer squad down on the track. And an update from Miller Park. It is 5-1 Brewers in the fourth inning. So the Brewers trying to force a game seven in the NLCS. And I'm sure a lot of eyes are on that one. I think there'll be a little excitement in the state of Wisconsin for that game tomorrow. A little bit. Maybe not quite as much as excitement as there was Monday evening. I think the bars the will be packed. The Packers <laughs> and the Brewers winning their 
games oh, yeah. within about 15 minutes of each other. If you want to get a seat at Holly's or any of the bars in the area, you better go early on tomorrow night That's if right. that game materializes. So when we get back from Oshkosh, there will not be a seat in any of those places. Second and 14. Rome Hill back to pass. Throws across the middle. It's caught by Bishop. Bishop breaks a tackle, and he's pushed out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Drag pattern across the middle. Good route tackle by number 22, Aaron Barr. About a 10-yard gain there for Bishop from Rome Hill. Makes what was a second and 14, a much more manageable third and five. Don't think they'll go up the middle at the heart of this Panther defense. They've had limited success doing that for sure. Romehild hands off to Klopp, who does go up the middle, but he's gonna be stopped short of the first down. A little off tackle, trying to get behind oh, Chewy Lee and Hunter Clausen. Still short of the first down. A little short yardage personnel change by the Panthers. And it looks like they're gonna bring the kicking unit on. It's gonna be about a 40 yard field goal here for Robert Crowley. And his holder is, is Alexander Bishop set up right on the 30 yard line. So it is a 40 yard attempt. Kick is up, it is long enough. And it is good. Not by much. And a huge cheer from the Baldwin Woodville crowd. It should be probably his longest of the season, I would guess. Or very close to it. Not many kickers in the high school realm can make it from 40. No, I'd say not, except Ryan Byrne probably. Ryan Byrne definitely has that leg. Want to take a look at another one of our sponsors for tonight's game. Union State Bank of West Salem is proud to support West Salem Athletics. Union State Bank is a hometown community bank serving families and businesses in the Cooley region. For all your banking needs, Union State Bank, where customers and community come first, member FDIC. Well, it's a brand new ball game here, Terry. 11.09 to go, tie game. This is what Friday nights are made for. That's right. Brendan Holt time now, too, if the, uh, uh, if the ball security course. Panthers looking to eat the clock and uh, keep the ball on the ground and give it to their featured back and see if he can spring one. He sprung one earlier in the game, one of his two touchdowns, 87 yards. And a final score from Onalaska, 49 to 14. The Hilltoppers will move on, defeating Medford. And a little squib kick, gonna be, and it's loose. And the Blackhawks say they have it. They're still waiting on an official signal. And it is Panther football. Boy, oh boy, Terry, that was close. Yeah, just mishandled it a little bit. It was actually a 50-50 ball there on the ground and fortunate for the Panthers or it would have been great field position for the Blackhawks. After three, it is 29-0 Sparta over Ashland. Ran into Adam Roberts earlier in the week. Used to work for us here at KQEG, now working for ESPN Lacrosse. He's up there. He was telling me that he was gonna make the drive all the way up to Ashland. Holman has made it 28-21, so they're within a touchdown now. First and 10, 32 yard line, fakes the handoff. Wopat being dragged by his jersey, but refusing to go down. Now he finally does after a gain of a couple yards. Boy, not much. Good defense again by Baldwin Woodville. That time number 11, Zach Nielsen on the tackle. Logan down 20 to nothing in the fourth, New Richmond. Sounds like a tough one for the Rangers, and the Rangers just barely made it into the postseason. They, you know, finishing three and four, but quality wins well, they can got thank, them in. Well, they can thank Sparta in their wins over Holman and Central for getting them in the playoffs. That's right. Otherwise, they would have been home. And now Sparta tonight. 
proving that they deserve to be in the playoffs. Little in pattern and almost intercepted. Boy, that was a dangerous one there. Bishop had an interception earlier and he could have had another one. Yeah, great pass defense, Bishop right. He was the closest man to it. Third and eight. 10 16 to go, tie ball game. <laughs> Panthers come up to the line. The crowd increasing the roar here, both sides cheering away. A little swing pass to Brennan Holt. He's got some running room and a first down, Brennan Holt. Boy, that was dangerous, though. That could have been picked off, too. A little gamble by the uh, Blackhawks and just Wopat threw it through the arms of a defender. Oh, it could have been pick six the other way. They needed eight and they got nine. So Brennan Holt with the yards after the catch there. Effectively a running play, even though it will count in the passing statistics. First down, 44-yard line. Two receivers to the right, handoff goes to Holt. Holt makes a couple of men miss, and he slips his way to the 50-yard line. Holt got a good block that time by Glassmaker, number 55, all-conference last year. Nice gain there, brings up second down and four right at midfield. Well, Pat takes the snap, hands off to Holt. Holt trips over a man. We got a penalty flag coming in. I think we got a hold. The ball this. is loose. I think we got a hold this time too on number 54, I believe. And I think they're going to say that the ball was down. I think, no, I think, no fumble there. I think number 54 will be accused of a hold, and it'll go Dylan against Noel. against the Panthers. You are correct. <laughs> That's going to march him back. Central now up 19-17 against Oregon. A big comeback there. They were down 17-7 at half. If you see the the uh, Central team getting some scores, you got to figure that Johnny Davis was involved. Certainly is an electric player, that's for sure. Second and 13 after the penalty. Well, Pat back to pass. Still looking, still looking, chased, and a, an assist from the referee yeah, actually, being in his way. Actually held on to the ball too long. And a huge loss, Joe Wopat couldn't get rid of it, and he's taken down in the backfield. Great pressure that time by the, the Blackhawks. A loss of 14 on the play. Third and 27. Down in distance here usually is like a screen pass, maybe a draw. Just to cr try and gain a little bit of extra breathing room. Just a quick quick pass knowing that the defensive pressure is pretty intense and the Panthers get a timeout. Well the Panthers take a timeout. We're going to do the same thing. It's third and 27. Panthers trying to get at least something out of this possession. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. You're watching high school football on KQEG TV. No matter where you are, it's easy to find Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating, Lacrosse. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Here you are. Right now, get over $1,700 in rebates and utility credits with your new Carrier Infinity Heating and Cooling System. 
Call or visit us online to ask more about our Gold Star Maintenance Program. Schneider Heating, West Salem. Schneider Heating around West Salem. Here you go. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. No matter. Welcome back, everybody. 8.07 left to go. Tie football game, third and 27, 27 yard line. After the big sack and loss, Joe Wolpat couldn't get rid of it. And the Panthers in a little bit of trouble here. This will be an interesting play call. Yeah. See with Justin Yang, the. Coming head, out of the timeout. Yeah, head coach in the OC <coughs> calls. The crowd amps up. Pretty good contingent yeah. from Baldwin Woodville that came down here. Empty backfield, three by two. And we got a pre-snap penalty. We have a false start. Oh boy, third and 32 now. Movement on that left side of the offense. I think a this is also down in distance time for a quick kick too. I've seen a lot of teams do that. Not sure that's part of uh, the West Salem strategy. Well, Wolpat lined up for a PAT earlier even though he didn't kick it. Wolpat, hands off to Holt, spin move and maybe a couple yards at the most, but that's I gonna like, be a great defensive possession for Baldwin Woodville. I, I like the play call. Conservative, yes. Field position dictated, maybe Holt getting the ball. Uh, but certainly the defense expected that, played very, very well. Fourth and 31, punting away is Theric Roberts. Alexander Bishop at right at midfield waiting for this one. Roberts kicks it away, it's a knuckler, and it is fair caught at the 48 yard line. Bishop had some room, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see him fair catch that one. I didn't see him uh, put his hand up, but Everyone stopped it with the assumption that he did, so. And we talked about Brendan Holt not playing a lot of defense early in the game, but he's out there now. Well, he's a money player, so you got to use your featured star on defense in a situation like this. This was a 14-3 game at halftime. Baldwin Woodville got on the touchdown board in the third quarter with a touchdown pass from Romehild to Bishop and a 40-yard field goal from Crowley. Bishop takes the pitch, and he's tripped up around midfield. Last maker right there trying to run a, it's all about numbers game when you run the, try to get to the edge, pulled the right guard and just ran a toss. Used to be called student body right, student body left. Remember those days? <laughs> That's what the, Bud Wilkinson in Oklahoma said, we're gonna run our student body right. <laughs> Now try to stop us, we're gonna put numbers out there. Second and eight, 50 yard line. Rome Hild tosses over the middle and it is caught by Nilsson and he keeps his legs churning and a first down. A little jump pass, Carl. That's it's the Tim Tebow throw. Yeah, that's the second time they've done that. Just the quarterback doesn't even get a drop, just gets a snap, stands up and just launches it high. Surrounded by black jerseys, too, and still get, got the first down. Well, Zachary Nilsson, a good-sized tight end, six foot, 180 pounds, and he got his mitts up there to bring that one in. Good vertical jumping ability. 39-yard line, first and 10. Rome Hild hands to Klopp. Andrew Klopp with some ro running room. And he's going to be all the way down. He keeps going, and it's a touchdown. I thought for sure Andrew Klopp was going to go down. Yards and no, oh, and no penalties. Yards after contact. Unreal. He's right behind Chewy Lee and Hunter Claus and uh, Thomas Albrichts and Carlson and Crowley. Good blocking by that offensive line. 
39 yards and a scamper and score. Crowley on to attempt the extra point. And special teams has definitely been a, a big help for Baldwin Woodville. Two field goals and the good kicking game here. And we got a whistle. Yeah, the, the clock, they were about to get charged with a penalty. And a wise decision to take a timeout there. Want to remind you that we will have the UW Lacrosse at UW Oshkosh game tomorrow. Kickoff is at 1.30. 1.30. The Mike Schmidt Football Coaches Show will start at about 12.45 on the stream. Or you can watch it back on Tuesday evening with kickoff airing at 7 p.m. Yeah, Jalen Clark, Ben Shramsky, our guests. Of course, Mike Schmidt, the star of the show. And uh, for those who would like to come and watch the show, have lunch. It's every noon on Mondays, Monday at 12 noon at the Clary and Alumni Center, Friends and Alumni Center on the campus of UWL. So we invite you to join us. The Eagles coming off a big win last week's Saturday evening. A rare 6 p.m. start against my pointers. Homecoming, by the way, this next week at uh, Roger Herring Field, Veterans Memorial Stadium. A week from tomorrow, family and friends and homecoming. Extra point is up and good. Makes it 21-14, and now the Panthers find themselves in, in a hole for the first time since it was three to nothing in the early going. Well, it's pretty apparent that in this, with this score and this, this time on the clock, you're gonna go to Holt. Of course, there's no secrets about that, and and the Blackhawks are also being told that on the sidelines, you know who to key, who to spy on, who they're going to go to. Secure the tackle, wrap up, and don't let him get to the second and third level or he'll be gone. And the beauty of the West Salem offense is they do also have the big receivers of Trenton Foreman and Caleb Young. They might have to use so the arm guys. Yeah, of Wolpat may be a key here. Down the stretch. Well, Pat has thrown a couple interceptions tonight, but has been effective otherwise. And we talked about turnovers being a key. And right now, Baldwin Woodville winning the turnover battle and right now winning the football game. Crowley with a little squib kick, and it is fielded, and it is going to be Panther football. Nice well, job there. Is that Blake Scholl? Yeah, w well done, Blake Scholl, the junior. 51 does his job. Little things make a big difference like that. The surprise topper onside kick. Maybe he doesn't get a chance to play much, but those special unit players, when they get in there, make the most of your opportunity, do your job, and Blake j did just that. What it results in is very good field position for the Panthers. Kind of a surprise, isn't it? Surprise that you would do that when you're ahead, 21-14. And Wolpat hands off. Not a lot of running room there off to the left side. Just may come back to haunt him too, Carl. Tackle by Andrew Klott. Couple of yards there for Brennan Holt. Going to be second and eight. New Richmond leading Logan 20 to seven in the fourth quarter. Aaron Barr brings the play in. Second and eight. Panther fans on their feet. 47 yard line. Wolpat back to pass. Throws and it's short and incomplete. Oh, not a good pass, had his feet set, didn't have a lot of pressure. Intended for number 21, Trenton Foreman, but way under throwing. Critical third down here too. And now it, it becomes 
Very big decision time for Justin Yane. First of all, do you go for it if you don't make the first down with 5.22 to go? Do you trust your defense to get a stop and get the football back? I don't think you do go for it if you don't get it, but we'll see what he decides. Obviously getting way ahead of myself there. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, Pat, back to throw. Fires down the sidelines, and it's in the arms of Trenton Foreman. He says he has it, but uh, the officials say it's incomplete. Yeah, both officials right there indicating that it was on the turf. So now a huge decision. What are you going to call now? This could very possibly be the game. Off I don't I don't think you go for it. Offense here. is remaining on the field. Caleb Young getting the play from the sideline or oh. he's coming off. Dalton Shams is going to bring it in. Boy, I I just if this is a gamble of course and uh, Justin Yang knows his team and uh, they, they, you, they you, you talk about the quick kick, you know, maybe just to see what Wolpat can do to just kick it away. He is in the shotgun. But for right now, it's the offense on the field. He's yep. back to pass. He throws, and it's incomplete. Looking for Austin Severe, and no flags there. Yeah, I don't think it was. I think it was close, but I think that was a good no call. Great coverage there. That's Nick Russell, number three. And... Baldwin Woodville in the driver's seat now to run out the clock perhaps. 5.07, 5.09 to go. I think I'd like to see that replay again. I'm not 100% convinced it wasn't. It was close. It was very, very close. Tight coverage there by Nick Russell, but no call. And Dalton Shams, or excuse me, Austin Severe was unable to come out with it. And it's a first down for the Blackhawks. Handoff goes to Klopp. Klopp gains a couple of yards. Ball security, of course. The key phrase to use. Klopp, again, has been the workhorse. Four TDs coming into this game. Two-way all-conference performer. They're going to call on him now. 123 yards on 24 carries and a touchdown. Had the go-ahead touchdown just a few moments ago here. <laughs> Clock management, a key component here too as we approach. We're under four and a half. Four minutes. Romehild takes the snap, hands to Klopp, makes a man miss, and he's taken down at the 40-yard line. Going to bring up third and three. He's getting some good blocking too. Jake Carlson, a 6'2 senior with a nice block. Albrickson also, along with Crowley on that left side. Critical third down and four. One could call this the biggest third down of the season for the Panthers. And their defense looking to hold them here. Down to three minutes and 40 seconds. Handoff goes to Klopp. He makes one man miss, and he's got enough for the first down. Talk about running hard. Now, how many people can run over Brendan Holt? And that's what he did to get the first down. That was special. A big, big first down. The clock will pause as they reset the chains and they wind it again, three and a half to go. First down and we're, we're in field goal range almost for Robert Crowley. You don't tend to talk about that in high school football, but Crowley being such a good kicker. And well coached waiting for the countdown from the back judge. Klopp takes the handoff and Gains about four. Yeah, nice run again. As you said, the quarterback doing a nice job of clock management. Looking at the official, starting his cadence right when the, the official starts his count. Tackle that time by Stranus. 
Rangers from uh, New Richmond are now down 20 to 14, so they're still in the game. Brewers, they're coming back. Brewers up five to two, top of the fifth. For those watching this live streamed broadcast. Back judge begins his countdown, snap, hand off to Klopp again, and he's strung out and pushed back. Nice play by the Panthers. Glassmaker right there, Holt injured. Couldn't finish that time. Valiantly trying to do his best, but you could see that Brendan Holt is not at his best. Second and 18, the Panthers do take a timeout there. Third and 11. A favorable down and distance for the West Salem Panthers. But the Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks with a seven point lead and just over two minutes to go. Got to figure one more first down and that could be just about it. It could be, <laughs> it, it certainly. Um, be very close. Yeah, this is, this is key, no question about it. We'll see if uh, Bob Gorniak, the defensive coordinator, Sends the house here on this. This third down and 11, I'm sure a stunt will be called, whether he sends the house or just sends maybe one of his linebackers in. And out of the timeout now. Here we go. Andrew Klopp has been a workhorse. He's got 28 carries in tonight's game. Here they come. Klopp makes a man miss, and he is going to be stopped short of a first down. That's some good blocking on that right side, though, too. Almost got there. Hunter Clausen with a good block on the right side. Panthers take another timeout. Gain of four on the play for Andrew Klopp. And it's fourth down and seven. Well, what do you call now if you're the Blackhawks? I don't think you, you go to the air, but possibly. Play action, you could also You could also consider a field goal. Because even a missed field goal, the Panthers would take over on the 20-yard line. Possibly. I'm sure that that's part of the strategy over on the Baldwin-Woodville sidelines. Well, the challenge has been issued by the opposing crowds here. There was a pretty good sized crowd came from Blackhawk territory. Those of you who don't know where Baldwin Woodville is located. It's west of Menominee. I knew that. Terry, you and I were up <laughs> in that region a couple weeks ago for the UW Stout We sure match were. Up. <laughs> On a beautiful homecoming day. <laughs> Not so beautiful for the Blue Devils. And I another timeout. Baldwin Woodville is going to take their own. Yeah, that was a... That was a thrilling victory oh my a couple gosh. weeks ago. Rusty Brown, they'll, they'll never forget that. And now he was hurt in practice this week, so that will be a question mark whether he plays. And with Peter, and he, had a, he had a big game outside of that game-winning touchdown. He, he had a did. big game that he night. Did. I think he had 10 tackles. And Peter Kissling out for the season. And Colton Neiman back, but Murphy may be injured. We'll see. Um, the backside is uh, a little bit nicked up. Well, it'll be interesting to see who advances, and we will let our viewers know early in the week where we will be next Friday night. Probably Dar on Alaska, probably. Possibly. Darlington squeaking by Melrose Mindoro, 15 to 13 on a final score there. New Richmond, final score, 20 over Logan, 14. So the Rangers season has come to a close.
Four and six. Fourth and seven. Here we go. <clears throat> Blitz coming. Klopp makes one man miss. Keeps his legs moving, and there's the first down. Oh, just a great call and great blocking on that right side. Albrechtson, Lee, and Clawson. The 30th carry of the game for Andrew Klopp, and it's the biggest one. Yeah, he's our player of the game, no question about it. Now think about this. Jake Lindquist, their top uh, rusher, out after last week's injury, and he picked up the slack. He did a great job. He more than picked up the slack. After that first down, we're under two minutes to go, 20-yard line. It's basically... A matter of keeping hold of the football for the Blackhawks. Back judge has begun his count. Snap. Hand off to Klopp. And he's got some more yardage. I've only got space on my on my stat sheet for 30 carries, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to make some addendums to this one. Jordan Bonte that time, only 5'8, 146 pounds, took on Brendan Holt and took him out of the play. Eight yard gain for the Blackhawks. Unofficially I've got him for 159 yards on 31 carries. And there's carry number 32, and he's tripped up. Oh, a shoestring tackle. There have been six more for him. Good open field tackle by Caleb Young. 32 carries, 161 yards, and a touchdown. you got to figure Andrew Klopp, a large portion of the reason why the Baldwin-Woodville Blackhawks are going to emerge victorious in this game. And Rome Hill takes a knee, and that's going to do it. For the final score, Baldwin Woodville 21, West Salem 14, a big second half comeback from the Blackhawks, just an unbelievable second half there. Uh, uh, what a dis what a disparity! It was a tale of two halves. Oh my god! Absolutely. Gosh. But if we talked at halftime about the way the Blackhawks play defense though in the first half. I mean, except for given uh, uh, given that long run to hold, they played extremely well. Played better than maybe a lot of people thought. Uh, were uh, fourth in the conference, the Middle Border Conference. Uh, what a by, good conference! Yeah, won by St. Croix Central but showed, um, showed me a little more than I thought perhaps they would bring. Panthers, uh, uh, too many three and outs and uh, didn't get their passing game going. A little bit predictable with Holt, but having a great season. He's my player of the game, by the way, on the, uh, uh, the Panthers sideline. So, oh, uh, absolutely. And had a great Brennan season. Brennan two touchdowns. Set all kinds of records, over 1,000 yards, as you talked about. Uh, so a lot of seniors leaving the Panther program, but you know I know they got a good JV program. They just continue to build and build and build. They uh, go to the playoffs essentially every year since they've joined the MVC. They've been right up on top. So uh, this is a setback temporarily, but uh, they will be back and uh, good coaching staff. So having a great year, uh, the the West Salem Panthers. And you know, that was one of those things that was talked about when West Salem did join the MVC was how were they going to compete? You know, coming from the Cooley Conference, it's usually not quite as high of a level of competition. Well, they've shown it. Well, the, physical in the physicality out. is what's kept them uh, uh, at the top of the MVC and the coaching and the leadership. And we, we've seen that since they joined the MVC. So uh, a disappointing loss at halftime. I would have never really dreamed that this game would turn around like it did I don't think anyone did but uh, let's give a lot of credit to the uh, Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks for winning this ball game here this evening well the Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks will move on to level two West Salem it's time for basketball season I guess for a lot of these guys so 
or wrestling season or hockey season. Hockey season. So Hockey's a big part of the athletic program here, as you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. And so, any final thoughts that you have for tonight's game, Terry? Well, I'm just looking forward to uh, continuing our coverage, and we'll see if we uh, Holman can win one. And uh, and we know that uh, Central was on top after being down at halftime. Logan out. Uh, so, uh, on Alaska, Holman, good possibility, Central. So, uh, um, well, I'm looking forward to working with you again next Friday night somewhere. Sounds good, Terry. Well, for my partner, Terry Erickson, and for Ryan Scaife on our camera tonight, I'm Carl Greenfield, and I want to thank you for watching the KQEG TV High School Game of the Week. Our final score, Baldwin-Woodville 21, West Salem 14. Good night, everybody. You've been watching the KQEG TV High School Game of the Week. Tonight's game featured the Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks and the West Salem Panthers. The KQEG TV High School Game of the Week is made possible by our sponsors like Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Your comfort is their business. Southwest Second Avenue in Onalaska. Schumacher Kish Cremation and Funeral Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and Onalaska. Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. Warriors Furniture. Quality furniture at affordable prices on South Avenue La Crosse. Hunter's Last Chance Bar and Grill on Leonard Street in downtown West Salem. Advanced Cargo, shipping locally and around the world on Leonard Street in downtown West Salem. Rich Heating and Air Conditioning, your Armstrong dealer in West Salem. Union State Bank of West Salem, where customers and community come first. Schneider Custom Window Coverings on Brickle Road in West Salem and American Family Insurance, and your agent in West Salem, Jim Quinn. Thanks for watching High School Football on KQEG-TV and KQEG-TV.com.